Hey, fabulous people. Uh, I was doing some organizing on my YouTube channel and I went, oh my gosh, I do not have my training on booking on here. <laughs> so here's your masterclass on booking and here's a scoop, you guys. Uh, I trained on booking so much that I thought, no, I for sure have a masterclass on this. I totally did not. So uh, here you go. I'm going to give you my training, my full comprehensive training on how to fill your date book and have bookings and that kind of thing. But I got to share my story with you first. Um, and before I do that, I just want to mention, like, if you like the videos and the training things, especially if you're one of my beauty consultants, make sure that you, and even if you're not subscribe to my channel so that you get the latest content that I'm posting because things do change over time and our business is constantly changing. But um, so here's my booking story. I just have to share this with you because I think it'll give you hope. When I was a beauty consultant um, back in my day, <laughs> so I'm like I'm a hundred years old there was no texting. Okay. So we had to call everybody. I hated booking. Oh my gosh. The telephone weighed 3000 pounds. I would have to like gear up for it. And then I would call people and, and even it was like this sick game I would play. Like I would call someone or dial their phone number and then I would go, please don't answer. Please don't answer. Please don't answer. Because I was terrified of what would happen if they answered. <laughs> Follow that up with, okay, so get this. Okay. This is not the way to do this. I became a sales director not calling a single referral. Okay, now I want you to know that um, if you've not watched my lead generating and networking video, that is not the way to work this business. If you can um, maximize those referrals, it's definitely gonna make your life easier. But here's why, here's the truth behind it. I was scared of the phone, so that was the first thing. But the second thing was, I, and this is just me being like real, I felt like every script out there or, you know, words that people had just sounded really salesy. And I just, I don't know, it just didn't sound like me. And I just, you know, people using the words, is there any reason why um, you wouldn't want to book with me? And here's the scoop, you guys. I want you to imagine, this is going to be one of my booking tips. I'm going to give it to you right now. I want you to imagine that you are going out for brunch with your girlfriends and you're, you're having mimosas, you're having the time of your life. And you just decide this is so much fun. We need to do this again. I want you to imagine saying to your girlfriends, is there any reason why we shouldn't get together and have mimosas again? No, you wouldn't talk like that. You would talk to them like they're people, right? Like they're your girlfriends. You'd be like, Hey girl, this is so much fun. We need to do this again. Like, when are we booking this? I don't want any excuses. When are we doing this? And so it's that same way. And so once I sort of realized the freedom and that I'm actually really good at creating scripts, um, I kind of unleashed myself and um, allowed myself to try some different things. And because of it, I've always had a lot of success with booking. So I'm going to give you all of my tips, all of the things. Um, so that you can be successful too. Okay, so um, give me one second. I do want to mention that everything I'm talking about today, I'm pretty sure everything that I'm going to talk about today is on my team website. Okay, my team website is emilyshooty.com. So it's just my name.com. So here we go. Uh, this is what my website looks like. So I want to share with you, if you go under consultant education, depending on your internet speed, give it a hot second, <laughs> click on education center. And then um, booking. So everything you need is on booking. And honestly, this booking guide thing, if you click on that, it's a PDF. It has all of my frequently, all my great tips, frequently asked questions, uh, tracking sheets, how to make a picture with your availability, my Canva for it, how to make a digital business card, all the different scripts that I use. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So all of it is there. Um, so be sure, um, to go there. Um, oops, my bad. Oh, okay. We're going to stop sharing. There we go. So, <laughs> so everything's on that website so that, um, you know, you can just go there and find it. So if you're like, what's the dial, what's the script again, or what should I use to talk to referrals? And I don't have calling scripts. So here's one of the best things you guys, you know, I do, people always ask me all the time, Emily, do you text people? Do you call them? Like, how are you getting such good results all the time? Honestly, whatever you can do is great. Okay. Um, if I have time to call, I actually do like calling people or doing like a texting calling combination where I call them. I leave the info in a voicemail. That's really upbeat and just kind of like what I'm, so they hear my voice and then I text them and say, Hey girl, it's Emily Shooty. Um, left you a voicemail. Let me know what you think. 
I don't say I'm with Mary Kay. I don't say what company I'm with. I just say, hey girl, it's Emily with, uh, it's just, it's Emily Shooty and just calling, you know, here's blah, 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 blah. You go through the wording and then, you know, let me know what you think if this is something you would enjoy. And then I do that in the text too. So um, yeah, anyway, so that's just kind of like a good hybrid method. I do think though, if you have time to call, you're going to build more connections and relationships. And honestly, it's less back and forth. And sometimes it's just faster to call someone. Sometimes too, if I'm in a texting volley, so to speak with someone, I'll be like, I, I'll just like pick up the phone and call them and just finish it out that way. Instead of, you know, having to do that back and forth. I think it's really helpful too. Okay. So here's the scoop. <laughs> you are a brand new consultant. If you're a seasoned consultant, if you've been in this company for years and years, the key to booking is consistency. And in order to have consistency, you have to have leads to call. So we're going to have a little quick chat about getting leads, okay? Because nobody on the planet, I mean, I've had people tell me this and I'm like, you're lying. <laughs> I'll say, you know what? No one enjoys going out and, and getting leads. I, I love it in the sense that like I make great connections with people and once I'm doing it I'm like okay this isn't that bad but just like working myself up to actually do it like sitting in my house going uh gotta go do something to, you know meet some new people it's not it's not the favorite part of my business like I love doing beauty sessions with people I love introducing people to our products I love new consultants coming in don't so much love lead generating but I want to make a point here okay so I want you to think of Something that you love, like you love to do it. Maybe you love, maybe you're one of those people, I call it tour de Francing, who likes like those crazy long bike rides this is so not my thing, but like maybe you love that. Okay, so maybe that's your thing. Maybe you love crafting. Maybe you love baking. Maybe you love, I don't even know. I'm like looking at my window trying to think of things. Boating, right? Um, I actually love boating. There's typically at least one thing within the thing you love that maybe you don't love. Okay. So maybe you love baking, but you hate the cleanup. Okay. Maybe you love boating, but just, I mean, literally it is like packing for an expedition. Do we have the cooler ready? Do we have the life jackets? Do we have sunscreen? You know, and then you bring your kids and it's like, forget it. It's at least an hour of prep time to even get on the boat. Or if you live in Florida, just getting to the beach is like an undertaking, right? So one of the things I love, I love, 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 love going on trips. I love traveling. I love going on trips. Hate, like literally hate more than anything else um, unpacking. So I have this, I have this picture for you that I'm going to share with you. Okay. So like, this is a trip I took um, a while ago and my suitcase, believe it or not, still sitting on my floor, not packed. Here we go. There you go. Okay. So it's <laughs> still sitting on my floor. I did nothing about it. Um, and it's because I hate unpacking. Okay. So, um, but here's the deal because I hate unpacking, just because I hate unpacking, um, does not mean that I'm going to allow myself to never travel just because I hate unpacking. It's the same thing with lead generating in your business. If you don't love lead generating, it's okay. You don't have to love it. You don't even have to try to love it. You just got to do it. Okay. So, um, just like, I got to unpack when I come home from a trip. So I have gotten better. I've made this rule for myself that I can't go on another trip until I've unpacked from the current last trip. And that seemed to help, except when I'm kind of stacked on trips, which I actually have coming up. I'm going to be in Colorado for a while, and then I'm going to be in Spain um, for the top sales director trip. And so it's going to be packing, unpacking, that kind of thing. So um, you don't have to love it, okay? So sometimes I think that, we have this mindset that, well, if I don't love it, I'm not going to do it. Or I don't have to do it if I, I get it. But yet eh, there's something about everything that you're not going to love as much as some of the other things, like on the scale of one to 10 of love, you're not going to love it as much. You just got to do it. Right. Um, and the idea is once you have the leads that you need, then you're going to, you know, book from your bookings, referrals, there's other ways to sort of generate from that. But sometimes you got to jumpstart it, put the paddles on to the, and um, get those leads. So my first little tip for you, if you are a new consultant, make a list. Okay, whenever I'm stuck in my business, I get out a notebook, make a list of everyone you know. Don't judge whether you think they'd want to buy Mary Kay, sell Mary Kay, use it. Just make the list. Okay, so that's where you're going to pull from um, initially. 
and don't judge anything. Just write their names down and not just your besties. Think of the people you've known for a long time that maybe you haven't talked to and just write them down at first. Then you can go back through the list and kind of make a strategy for how you're going to reach out to each person based on how long you've known them, right? Because no one wants to call up anyone and be like, hey, haven't talked to you in five years. Want to book a Mary Kay beauty session? Um, we have words for that. Okay, it's in my booking dialogue thing. Okay, so my booking to-do list for you, number one, if you're a seasoned consultant and you're kind of like, you kind of been scrapping for bookings for a while and you really don't have them and nobody's really saying yes, I want you to think of how many people are in your house. Okay, so I've got a husband. I've got an 11-year-old and a 7-year-old. Okay, there is one bookable person in my house and he's my husband. Okay, so you're not going to meet people in your house. Um, there are some fun strategies for getting referrals and stuff through um, like your Facebook. If you're doing our Facebook beauty sessions, we do some of that. But like, honestly, if you just need a restart, go out and get leads. So your first little assignment is um, to find a partner who also wants to network with you and schedule a lead generating event before you know, before you do anything else after this video is schedule something with a friend, because if you are not someone who's going to do it yourself, you got to, you got to have the accountability of a partner. If you're like, I don't know how to get leads. Great. I have an entire masterclass on all the great ways to lead generate and get those leads. And you can pick whatever ideas sing to you and go from there. So that's tip number one. Okay. So we got the leads. I just have to cover that because sometimes, you know, we go to book and we're like, but we don't have anybody to book. So um, so I'm going to give you, these are Emily's, these are just my, like, I mean, masterclass top 10 booking tips that you can take all the way to the bank that are going to keep your date book full and just really help you. So I'm going to share these with you. So the first one, this one's my favorite. That's why it's number one. Okay, here we go. Never rely on future business to build your business. Okay, you are going to hear me talk about this one a lot and you are not going to listen to me <laughs> because everybody does this, myself included. Okay, like I've done this too. Here's what it means. Okay, so a lot of times, um, especially if you're restarting or you're a new consultant, I find this happens. I'll have someone text me and say, Emily, I finally got someone who would say yes to me and is booking with me. And I'm like, and it doesn't matter if it's virtual, in person, from a helicopter, like however you're doing beauty sessions, it doesn't matter, right? You're like so excited about this booking and you, and, and then you get a couple more and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm filling my date book. And let's say your original goal based on your goals, like whatever target, whether it's an income goal or you want to go on target for something on the career path. Let's say you discover that in order to do that, you're going to need about 10 booking uh, beauty sessions on your date book. And if you don't know how to create that kind of target goal, that's what I'm here for, or your sales director, um, she can help and you and work with that. So let's say you decide you need 10 bookings, right? So let's say you're like, oh my gosh, Emily, I'm so excited. I got five bookings, people that said they would book with me. And I'm like, awesome. Okay. Where's the other five, right? That's what I'm thinking in my head. And you'll say, oh, no biggie, like I'm going to do those five appointments. And then at those appointments, I'll get the rest of the referrals and the bookings that I need from that to finish out the 10. No, 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 friends, because here's what happens. Out of five, let's say, I don't know, there's a snowstorm, three cancel. Now you only have two and you were relying on those. Now you go and do those two. Let's say at one, you don't get a lot of referrals or nobody wants to book a second appointment or you just don't have the skills yet to kind of generate that. Now you've got nothing and you're sad. Okay. So empower yourself, get the 10 up. And then what you get at that future business is icing on the cake, right? I always love having at least 10 up. And then the stuff you get at the appointments is just maintenance and icing on the cake. I promise you, your date book is always going to be full. If you if you really just hunker down and rely on this, this number one rule, which is never rely on future business to build your business. So, okay. Number two, it's getting heavy in here, people. Okay. Let me pull this one up. The, the second one is, okay. This one's good too. It's kind of related. They're all related. Can't imagine why. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Volume 
makes an unpredictable business um, predictable. Okay, so this one, this is another pitfall that I find um, people fall into, okay? They, they call me up and, they, and like I said earlier, maybe it's been a while or you're trying to get, you're really trying, like you really want to get this thing going and you get the one booking. Okay. And I want you to imagine the whole, the one booking to rule them all, right? I'm a big Lord of the Rings girl. So I always give the example of like Gollum and the one ring and he just like obsesses over it in his little cave. <laughs> This is you in the one booking, right? You're like, oh, this booking. And here's how it goes. I get really stressed out by this kind of because I, I feel for you and I, I genuinely want you to have success in your business. And so when, so this is what it sounds like. I'll get boxers and phone calls from consultants and they're like, Emily, I got this one booking. I'm so excited about it. And the hostess said, she is going to have 10 people there. Oh my gosh, like, I don't even know if I have enough trays and can I borrow some from you? And and like, you are just like, so excited about this one booking. Like you, you literally cannot fathom or think of anything else. And here's what I'm doing on the other, and your, and, or your director is doing on the other line. She's like, dear Lord, please let this booking hold. Because if it does not, I fear that this consultant will be crushed for the rest of her entire life. Okay. Because... <laughs> Um, it, it happens, you guys, like, first off, sometimes our hostesses are better salespeople than we are. And they convince us that like, they're going to have 10 there. It's gonna be so great. And then the day before they're like, oh, actually no one's coming. <laughs> You're like, what the heck? You just told me you were having 10. Um, and, and it crushes you. Okay. So volume, meaning having more, up uh, makes a business that is not predictable, it actually makes it predictable, right? So get up, empower yourself. Don't obsess about the one booking. Get up what you need. Again, it's kind of related to the first one, right? Like get up what you need. Get up extra um, because you're going to need it, right? You don't want to rely on this one booking and then have your everything crushed because nothing is more crushing than that. I totally get it. It's the same thing with team members, the same thing with everything in our business. Like you need to have the volume um, just for your mental sake. Okay. Here's another one. This is, this is going to help you. Okay, Emily. So how do you get this like awesome volume you're talking about? And always, how come, how come consultants ask me this all the time? How do you always have bookings? Like, Every day people are booking with me. Okay, so how, how do you do that? Th this is why. Number three, to have a lot of bookings, you have to book a little bit every day and often. Okay, now this might seem like a, well, duh, <laughs> of course, but there's some psychology here, right? So if you, you know, back in the day, we used to talk about um, some people would take like three hours on a Sunday and do all of their booking. I personally find if I book a little bit every day, texting is fine, however you book, right? It doesn't really matter. What happens is then it, it takes like, let's say you went, you haven't booked anybody and you haven't talked to anybody ever, right? And you start. If you did a few booking or, you know, a booking attempts, we'll call it, let's say 10, 15, however many a day, you're always going to have messages coming back because on day one, you might not have anybody who texts you back, but then you send a reminder text on day three. Now day one, people are texting you back. Day two, people haven't texted you back, but on day four, you send the reminder text and day two people. So now you always have people saying no. You always have people saying yes. You always have people saying, I have to check with my friends. But here's the psychology behind that. When you're constantly, and honestly, I don't even care if people say no. I just like getting responses. I think there's some dopamine stuff rush when you get responses from people. So um, give yourself a little, your daily dose of dopamine every single day by having a couple of messages coming in all of the time. Um, how are you going to do that? Two tips. Uh, I'm going to talk about one of these in a little while. It's called a booking bag. We'll get to it. The other thing is people, let's say you're really, you're like, Emily, I'm so busy. How am I going to do this? Okay. Here's how I want you to think of all of the time that you're waiting for things. You're waiting for the doctor, waiting for your kids, waiting for your husband, waiting for Netflix to buffer, 
waiting for the chicken to grill on the grill. Like we're waiting. I swear we spend half our life just in these little two to three to five minute waiting times. If you got your stuff with you, that's when you pull out your phone and you go, okay, instead of scrolling the gram or Facebook or whatever, I'm going to pull out my phone and I'm going to text a couple of friends back. Like that's how you're going to get the bookings is just, you know, and even if you only have time for two or three messages, it's great. Okay. Sometimes we get in our head. If I'm not going to do 20, well, I'm not going to do it at all. Y'all I'm a recovering member of the all or nothing club, right? It's like saying, well, I'm not going to work out because if I can't, you know, do two hours of cardio, I'm not going to do it. But I guarantee you, if you did 10 sit-ups a day, you're going to be farther than if you did nothing and then did two hours of cardio one time a month. Okay. So a little bit every day, you're always going to have messages coming in. You're always going to feel good about your business. You're always going to feel like I can have the bookings. So set yourself up. It does require some tracking. I personally, uh, recommend some kind of text. If, if you're someone who has goals in your business and leads and, you know, you're doing beauty sessions, one of, there are some electronic tools that can help you with this. One of them that I use is called Project Broadcast. It is a texting service, so to speak, that um, helps you, like you can put people in groups, you can send texts from your computer. There's also different ways to link your phone to your computer and text from your computer, like you're just your regular old number. Um, I know on Windows, you can do that. I'm a Windows, I'm a, that's right, I'm a Windows girl. Um, so you can do that right in Windows too. So, um, but yeah, so a little bit every single day. All right, number four, we're on. Okay, so, yep, I, I do talk about this now. Um, so organized, I'll give you a hope. Okay, so your, your next little assignment. So assignment one was either make your list if you're a new consultant or if you're a seasoned consultant, pick a friend and go out and schedule a lead uh, generating event. Um, your booking to-do list number two is to make your booking bag. Now you're like, Emily, what's a booking bag? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. It's so simple. Um, it is not even a thing you have to buy anything for. Uh, if you are a woman, you have no less than 11 tote bags sitting around your house. Mm -hmm. So just find one of them. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And what you're going to keep in that um, that booking bag is your date book. You're going to have um, like some pens and highlighters, right? However you like to track your bookings. Uh, you're going to have some booking tracking sheets, which are on my website. So you can, you know, if you want to manually track your bookings. Um, let's say you went out and got leads um, or you have profile cards from your parties and beauty sessions. You're just going to have it with you. Essentially, a booking bag is having your booking stuff with you all the time. It is like surgically attached to you. It is in your, it goes with you to your car. It goes with you to your kids' sporting events. It goes with you to work. So when you have those five minutes here and there, you can do that. Now, if you're in a pinch, one thing that I've done, pro tip, um, if I'm like going to be somewhere and I think I might have time, um, I'll actually take, and I don't want to have my day book with me. I'll actually take a picture of the next like two months that I have um, so that if people are messaging me back and they're like, hey, does the 17th work? I'll be like, oh, I can just like pull the picture up on my phone. Now, I know there's like a bunch of people watching this saying, well, Emily, why don't you just use a digital calendar? Because friends, there is something awesome about seeing your own handwriting with your own colors, right? There's just something about it. So um, it's not going to happen. I do use a digital calendar for certain things, but not for, um, like for, you know, when I'm booking interviews and stuff with people or I have consultant coaching calls, I'll use a digital calendar for that, but not for my beauty sessions. I love, love, love still old school. Look at my handwriting. All right. So that's your next assignment. Okay. This is a fun one. Um, this is going to help you get bookings get better booking results from the messages you're sending. Okay. So let's say I find majority of people, um, textbook, uh, just cause we're chickens. <laughs> we don't want to call people. I get it. It's all good. Uh, it's also easier. It's also great if you have babies screaming and kids like I do, and they're like constantly bugging you about stuff. It's easier to text sometimes. Okay. So now that we have that out of the way. This is the best tip I can give you to get faster results. 
with your textbooking. And it's just a way of thinking is really what it is. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, this is tip, this is the tip. Booking is like ping pong. You're gonna wanna simplify so there's less back and forth. Okay, so let me explain this. Booking is like ping pong. I used to put, I used to be kind of like the Waiwega Fremont High School ping pong champion. I was like really good at ping pong. We had one in our, we had a barn and we had a ping pong <laughs> barn. Yeah, that's right. That was good. Um, but anyway, okay, so here's the scoop. You text someone about whatever this, the dialogue or whatever you're texting about booking. Doesn't matter what the words are, right? That's you pinging the ball to her. Then she says, awesome, that sounds great. Or that sounds interesting. Tell me more. That's a pawn. Then you ping back. Um, here's some more detail. Blah, 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 blah. Then she like pongs back. Okay, when would we book it? Then you pong back. Um, do you prefer nights or weekends? She pongs back weekend. You pong back 2 or 2.30. And then, and then you hear nothing. And you're like, where did my ping pong buddy go? Where'd she go? She's not here anymore. And then it's pong and you're ponging and you're like, you're not getting any ping back. You're just pong, pong, pong. Um, you know, you check in in a few days, you do your due diligence and you keep following up and it's gone. Okay. It's because there's too much back and forth. And if there's too much back and forth, you're going to lose bookings. You're going to lose people. It's got to be simple. So here are some ways to reduce the amount of back and forth. In fact, my goal is to have my script be so great. And it sounds like I'm talking to, you know, I'm a human being talking to another human being. It's fun. It's offering something valuable to them. And I'm including my dates and a picture of me all in one text so that the original first time I ever text her, I book people like I've sent my texts she writes back, I'll take July 11th at seven o'clock. I have booked people in one ping and one pong. Now that the results not typical. Okay. I would say an average that I like to go by is four to six ping. That would be one pong is two ping pong is four ping pong is six. No more than that. I try not to go more than that because then it's going to require follow-up and now you feel like a phone stalker and now like you know, we get it all in our head. Oh my gosh, she thinks I'm annoying. All that, you know, all the things we think. So it's just easier to simplify it. So here's how you're going to do that. Number one way is to have a picture with your availability that you send with every single message. Whether they book on the first message or the fourth, you send this picture with everything and it's constantly updated. You can make this picture however you want. You can make it in, I mean, old school, like publisher. You could make it... Um, like on a picture app on your phone. I personally use Canva. I do have a Canva template link in my boss unit booking guide on my website. You can just click the template link, copy mine, unless you, you know, if you enjoy like reinventing the wheel girl, go for it. But so here's what mine looks like. And I want to show you what it has on it. So this is what mine looks like. And so it has beauty sessions with Emily. It has my picture Y'all make sure it's a good picture. Like you're wearing makeup. You're someone that someone would want to book a beauty session with. So if you don't have one, just like, you know, do your hair cute, put some makeup on and have somebody take a good headshot of you with your cell phone against kind of a, I actually, this is a selfie I took at the Omni Hotel in Dallas. They had a really nice gray wall with good lighting, but ba bada bam, bada boom, done. Okay. And then I put my info and then um, I love putting some like, information here, like 18 years of experience. That's my story. Um, virtual or in-person appointments, because I do both. My websites, both my websites, um, all products meet the EU sa safety standards and are safe for sensitive skin so that they have a little scoop on me. But then here's the key. I have my availability listed out. And because it's in Canva, every time I book, I just quickly update the picture and I can update it on my phone. I can update it on, um, I can update it on my computer. Okay, so um, every message gets this. Okay, so here's some examples. I just wanna show this to you of like, you know, here's the ping. So I sent her the first message. She ponged back. I think it did it right. I would like to do in-person with friends on March 6th. What time? Here's the times I do. So that's a ping. 
Then she pawns back two would work perfectly. Awesome. It's booked. Now I'm going to tell her what happens next. I put you down for two o'clock. I send you a confirmation email with the link, blah, blah, blah. I have another video on how I confirm appointments. I'm not going to go into that. Here's another example. The original text is the ping. Oh my gosh, Emily, it's amazing news. Pong. I, I would prefer to do it in person. Um, great. That <laughs> works for me. That's a ping. And you guys notice how like I'm talking to them in emojis and fun stuff. I'm not being like super uber professional because you don't need to be. March 4th would work. What time? Great. Pong. Booked. Okay. See how that works? Um, okay. So that is the best thing you can do is having that date with your picture, um, having really good words. Okay. So here's the thing about scripts. Um, you don't have to copy them exactly. Okay. We're going to be getting into this in a, in a hot second here. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you can make them your own. But if you're copying a script from the right cat, if you're copying the right cat and, and she's had longevity with it, I would recommend not doing a lot of changing and modifying, just making sure that it sounds like you by modifying some of the fun language, I would say. So um, the next one I kind of already talked about, because um, I, I tend to, I've trained on this so many times, I group things together, um, getting your contact list together. So this is tip. Um, this is tip number five, including your chicken list. I know you have one because I have one and I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> so I know we all have a chicken list. It's people that you want to contact, but maybe they intimidate you because of their profession or just, I don't know, who knows? We have weird reasons why people intimidate us. Here's the other thing I'll tell you about this, especially if you're a new consultant listening to this. You're going to look at that list I told you to make in your notebook where you brainstorm this list of people. And I want you to, here's what you're going to do with that list. Even if you're a seasoned consultant restarting, make a list. You've got a list. I know you do. Make the list. I want you to pick the top three people that you know, like you're 99% confident are going to say yes. Okay. So go ahead, circle them, put a star around them. Those are the people I want you to ask first, because if you can get a yes from the people, like say it's your mom. Okay. Your mom better book with you, by the way, <laughs> or your sister or whoever, your bestie, your ride or die bestie. She better book with you. Y'all, my two ride or die besties, when I started, did not want to book with me. And I said, well, that's just too bad. Cause you're my, you're my ride or die ladies. Like you're doing this right. And they, they ended up loving it. And now they're good customers, but you know, back in the day, I want you to pick the top three. And I want you to call them first, because if you can get that win, it's going to give you the confidence to reach out to some of the more scary people that maybe you're not so sure um, what they're going to say, right? So, um, so yeah, so get that contact list together. Okay, the next one is, um, I kind of already started talking about this, use the scripts and talking to people like they're people. I talked about this earlier, <laughs> um, talk to people like they're people, right? Um, I use lots of emojis. I um, I like to try to get to know them. Like sometimes I'll have people where they didn't answer me on the first text, but then I text them, you know, to remind them like, hey, did you get my first text? And they'll be like, girl, so sorry, kids. And I'll be like, um, story of life. You know, my kids are home for the summer, blah, blah, blah. You know, just like anything that I can connect with them on, do it. Like have fun with them. Um, I love being funny with people too, just like I am in this video, you know, hopefully you laugh at all my really awesome jokes. Um, but you know, I just, I like them to know like, Hey, I'm so excited to meet with you. I can't wait to meet you and your friends. I'm always like positive, upbeat language because you are setting the tone. It's not just the booking. You guys, you want people to be excited to meet you. They are not going to be excited to meet you if everything that you say is really professional and really corporate. They are, however, going to be really excited to meet with you if you're a lot of fun, if you're upbeat, if you seem like, if you seem booked, right? Even if you have zero bookings, if you seem booked, people will want to book with you. It's sort of that, um, you know, thing where you, you know, like that FOMO, like people are like, oh my gosh, she's booked. She must you know, lots of people must meet with her. So I want to book with her too. Um, if you are a corporate gal, love you. Okay. And you're used to doing things by the book, or you're more of that type A C personality, you love details, 
girlfriendy stuff makes you barf. Here's what you're going to do. I want you to take any script you use and you are using the script by the book, girl, because you you follow the rules. You have not deviated from the script. OK, so let's say you do that. I want you to add no less than three emojis to every text that you send. I know. I know you're going to fight me on this, but trust me. It's all you have to do is just and, and they don't have to be in a row, like like sprinkle them into each text you send. No less than three emojis if that is you, my friend. Okay, so um, the other side of that is, this is also why it's important to use the scripts. Um, you don't wanna go crazy, especially if you're texting. If you are writing like dissertations in texts that are like multiple paragraphs long, nobody's gonna read that. Nobody reads anything anyway. Your texts have to be to the point, fun, but not, like really just look at your languaging. The other thing too, and this is what I love about Project Broadcast, depending on how you're wording things. So again, if you need help with this, I have my boss unit scripts in the booking guide. There is a reason. I hate when people use abbreviated language there. I just said it. I hate it when people use the and sign for, you know, at, you know, or the and sign instead of and, but it shortens the text. And there are, like, if your texts are too long, if you use a lot of links in your text, if you don't use, like, customizable things like, hi, Karen, or hi, Emily, um, you're going to go right into their spam filter. And then your phone number is going to be associated with spam. So there is some uh, algorithmy stuff with um, spam filters in your phone. So that's another reason why my texts are the way that they are. Okay, we're done with that. Um, so yeah, so using those scripts though, are really going to help you just kind of get those results in your business. All right. So speaking of that, another thing with following the scripts is, uh, you may need to contact people more than one time. Okay. I want you to read that again. Um, you may need to contact people one more than one time. This is tip number seven, and I'm going to give you tip number eight at the same time. Tip number eight. You aren't bugging people. Read that 10 more times. Okay. So again, you're not bugging people. Here's a scoop, you guys. If you are new or if you've never really gotten going, <clears throat> today's world, think of, I want you to think of your dentist, chiropractor. I get no less than like six robo things from my dentist. Like I'm getting robo texts, robo calls, robo emails. And if I don't hit confirm, they keep sending them. People forget things like that. And so here's what I want you to do. I want you to resist the urge to think, well, I, I reached out to a whole bunch of leads and heard nothing. If you were a consultant and you came to me and said that, I would say, okay, well, how many times did you reach out? Well, twice. I didn't hear anything. Um, there are statistics about this. Uh, I can't pull them up in this exact moment. It's something like 80% of sales happen on the fifth or beyond contact. It is pretty rare that when I text someone that I instantly get a response. Sometimes like a day or two will go in between. I do get a lot of responses because again, I'm working the volume. Okay. But if you're not working volume, you're, you're going to get really in your head about this. You're going to send out some texts to your people and you're going to hear nothing like crickets. You're, you're not going to get a nope. You're not going to get a yep. You're not going to even get a winky face emoji. You're going to get nothing. And, and you're going to go, oh, nobody wants to book with me. Why am I doing this? Oh my gosh. You're going to, you're going to have a total come apart. Okay. A lot of people do this. It's, it's like, it's a thing. Um, here's probably what happened. Okay. Re reality. You texted your friend. Um, it was a great text. You followed the words. You sent your picture thing like I taught you. You hear nothing. I guarantee you she looked at the text and she was like, oh my gosh, cool. Crap, the UPS man's here and he needs me to sign for something. So now she's at the front door signing for something. Now her kid is coming from the other room. Mom, 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 what are we having for lunch? Blah. And, and like the nuclear bomb went off in her house. She totally forgot about it. Okay. She's not even thinking about it in her head as much as we are. She's just like, I forgot about it. So then, 
and this is in the booking guide, you're going to send a follow-up text a, a couple days later saying, hey, you know, it's Emily just checking in. I know how busy life gets. Like, did you get my text? Just want to make sure you saw it. Now, you might hear from her. You might continue to hear nothing. Sometimes it takes the third or the fourth reach out for me to hear. And typically it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you texted me. I was so busy and the UPS man was at the door and my kid. And I'm like, girl, I totally get it. I'm always really kind about it because I, I do get it. How many of you, I've done this too. Someone texts me and I have this like brilliant reply in my head. And, and I swear I've sent it to her, but no, but I literally just dreamt it up in my head that I like replied to her. I never actually did it. So people are doing that to you too. So it is okay to reach out more than one time. In fact, you are not going to get results without that. Again, why I love using a system like Project Broadcast, and I have my referral link in my website for Project Broadcast. I don't like I just really believe in having things automated. I'm a busy mom with kids and like stuff going on. So um, that allows you to book using campaigns where you make the four messages at one time, add people to it, and it drips them out after so many days. And if they reply, it'll pull them out of the campaign so that you don't have to worry about them getting messages after they're already in contact with you but it keeps things rolling in your business. So again, but you're going to need to contact people one more, more than one time. It's not weird. In fact, it's weird if you don't have to. So just get that in your head. Like, okay, I'm going to have to reach out a bunch of times. It's not a big deal. And if you are really hung up on the bugging people part, um, because I get it, <laughs> I do. We start to feel like a phone stalker. I have two techniques for that. One thing that I've always done, if I ever feel genuinely like I'm bothering someone, I just tell them that. I just text them and say, hey, Nancy, so sorry to reach out again. Um, if I'm totally bugging you, just tell me I'm a big girl. Winky face. Okay. Corporate people, you winky face right there. Um, <laughs> you're going to love me. Um, totally, you know, if I'm bugging you, just let me know. I, I wasn't sure if this was something you were interested in. You know, bugging people is my worst nightmare, but you know, if it is something, let me know. And typically they'll either say, oh no, it's not really something I'm interested in. Or they're like, girl, oh my gosh, I was at the door and the UPS man was here. And then the Schwanz man came and then the mailman came. And then my husband was mowing the lawn. I mean, just like <laughs> all the things that we can, um, that can happen with that. So, um, yeah, so don't, <laughs> Don't be afraid, you guys, just do it. Okay, um, forgot where I was going with that. No biggie, you get the point. Reach out more than one time. Okay, the next one is, I sort of alluded to this earlier. This is along the lines of getting those results. Uh, I shared the wrong screen. I can do this, here we go. Um, I'm in presentation mode here. Okay, so there, um, this is tip number nine. So we have one left after this. Use two forms of communication to increase your results. So this is where I'm talking about, depending on what info you have for someone, if you only have a phone number, then your two forms would be a call and a text. Um, if you have their email, it could be a text and an email. Um, and the email just says, hey girl, just, you know, you know how phones are these days, not sure if you got my text about blah, and then you kind of like almost paste the script again. Um, but I just thought I would email you too, just to make sure you're getting it. Because sometimes, you know, depending on how you're texting people, maybe their phones don't even get it. Um, maybe their phone was turned off. I mean, you guys know how it is. It's technology. It can go wrong. So using two forms is going to get you better results. And it's also going to um, just kind of create or increase the awareness uh, for them of, you know, hey, did you get my stuff? Did you not get my stuff? Okay. And then the last one is, um, okay, this is kind of a little bit about tracking. So this is going to give you some ideas on how to track this. Um, i trying to share my screen. Here we go. Okay, so tip number 10, track the four groups. If you lose track, you lose the booking. So I like to, to kind of keep people in groups. So group one would be the people who said yes and booked. You're going to want to have their info so that, you know, maybe you write it. I like to write it in my date book. So I always have their info so that I can, you know, kind of go into the confirmation process. Because friends, um, if you're going to spend the time getting leads, booking them, you need to also confirm like a 
beast boss lady that you are. Okay. So please watch my masterclass on confirming or my videos on confirming because that is a whole nother um, thing. It's not, it's not hard. It's just a thing you have to do. Okay. Is just confirm people a lot and send them touch points, no less than three touch points in between booking it and holding it. Okay. So people who said yes, group two, the people who are in process. So maybe they said, I just need to check with my friends. I need dates, that kind of thing. Group number three are the people who are not interested, right? They flat up say, nope, no, thank you. Stop. It's not for me. Um, I also keep them in my context so that I remind myself not to contact them. And you can do that. You know, if you have a texting thing, you can actually click do not disturb on someone so that you don't contact them. And then, of course, um, my favorite group, the ghosters, the cute little ghosts in our lives, right, that um, we just don't hear from. We just got to keep, tech, you know, sending the additional follow up messages. I do have a tracking sheet in the Boss Unit Booking Guide that, um, you know, kind of puts the different attempts. If you want to track it this way, um, that would be your assignment number three. OK, so number one is find a partner to network with if you need to. Number two is your booking bag. And number three is create your booking tracking system. Okay, so how are you going to track it? How are you, um, like, let's say you, you get little leads on slips of paper. Like, what are you going to do with those slips? Are you going to, like, tape them? You know what I used to do with those? Okay. I used to just, okay, let's say this post-it note. You know, we have little drawing slips. Like, if you watch my lead generating thing master class like let's say you go honor working women I used to take two-sided tape and like tape the lead here and then I would make notes about it here and then tape the next lead here and then notes here and then next lead here notes here because sometimes you need to make notes um you know especially if you're calling people or whatever so that's one way you could do it if you have the little slips you could also just write out each name in a notebook so that or on a my spreadsheet girls, you're getting all excited right now. I can tell. <laughs> like, I'm going to make the most beautiful spreadsheet. That's great. You can do that. Don't spend a lot of time on it. Okay. We tend to spend um, a bazillion uh, things on this. So I always love the quote, you don't need to be amazing to start, but to be amazing, you need to start, right? That's on that car commercial and someone else probably way more profound said that quote. Um, so definitely getting started. And I, I do want to say too, that, um, the more that you book, this is the other just sort of um, commercial I'm going to make for, you know, continuing to do it more frequently is when you increase your skill because you've done it over and over and over and over and over and over and you've sort of like figured it out, um, you're going to increase your results. I have a super high book rate, a super high hold rate, like I rarely have cancellations and it's because I've built the skill over time of how to connect with people while I'm booking them, you know, using like talking to people, other people, a lot of the tips I've already given you, but it's, it's nuanced when you, when you know what you're doing. And so don't be afraid to make mistakes It is not going to look pretty. Like I said, I spent my whole first year not contacting a single referral. I remember I remember I was having trouble booking and my director said, well, why don't you call me and pretend I'm someone you're booking? And I did that. And she was like really quiet. And she was like, that was really bad. <laughs> so it was really bad, right? It's, it's hard until it's easy. Um, you know, it doesn't make it bad if you have to go through and, and try it. It's going to be horrible at first, but that's how you're going to start is to, is to just kind of get those things going. So um, I hope these tips help you. There are more tips in the boss unit booking guide and on my emilyshooty.com website. And um, yeah, and I'm always adding videos here too. So don't forget to subscribe to our fun, my fun little channel here. So have fun booking, fill your date books, ladies. You got this.